Uh, I want to just uh, shout out to Bob's shirt real quick. <laughs> Worldwide Lean, if World, you're not World watching War on YouTube. Lean. Oh, World War Lean, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Worldwide Lean. Hello and welcome back to Yay Basketball, the basketball game show. Monday, January 2nd, 2023. The new year is here, baby. Woo! Recording live from the A studio. I am your host and producer, Michael Padilla. Along with me today, Mr. Grassman, Bob Aldritz. Hey, happy uh, 2023. Happy 2023 to you, our Wizards watcher, Justin Moore. How's it going? You're never getting over that grass thing, huh? <laughs> nope. That's not, that's, not a, that's not a bad thing. It's that's like, a great it's thing. A grass stain, if you will. Grass only. Ah. <laughs> and of course, welcome back. back. Our resident statistician and historian, Trey Dishner. Welcome back. Hey. Woo. Happy day after New Year's Day, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> Glad to be back. Glad to be back. We are observing it. Uh, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Mm. Listening here, uh, Trey. So good to have you back, buddy. Uh, how was your last month? Uh, it's been busy. I believe it. I believe and it. I've missed you guys, so I'm glad to be back. We are glad, glad to have to talk you. basketball. I missed you so much. Yay basketball, guys. Yay basketball, indeed. Thank you so much for listening and watching and joining us today. Uh, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, share f- with friends, rate five stars, and follow us at yay underscore basketball on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Add me on the ground. Last week, uh, we ended 2022 with a bang. One of our best episodes I think we've yes. ever had. Uh, we played What Did He Say? Five Second Violation, Team 20 Questions, Did This Dude, uh, in which uh, 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 Bob laid to rest Sun's guard Landry Shamit. Uh, it was a truly hilarious episode, so be, be sure to go check that out. It was it was great. Um, now, uh, this is the Basketball Game Show, so if uh, before we dive into our first game of the day, Justin, can we get an update on the scoreboard, recap of the picks, and Recap of the month. Yes. So a new year, a new month begets a loser mm. and a winner. Me. Hey. Me. <laughs> he finally I'm a won. Winner. <laughs> Look at me, mom. Anyway, so it's this is really. I'm glad this is here where it belongs, uh, and it, it's not going anywhere, and that's fine. You got lucky. Nope. <laughs> Luca, uh, last two bets really helped me out there. I had the Mavs over the Rockets uh, to end. The month. Oh, I didn't realize that that was that was the game yeah. that you won. <laughs> oh, holy crap! Good for you, dude. Uh, the Cavaliers did let you down, Trey. Um, not that it would have mattered because even if you won, I bet so many points that Luca really pulled it through. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael, third place, Hornets over the Thunder. You did win. You won two to one. Yeah. Even um, Bob, you also won two to one. I did. I know. <laughs> you did. You had wild. the Spurs over the Knicks. Crazy. Um, but you did wind up in last place, and that does mean something very special. I had to put all my points on the board for that, too. I know. And you know what? You made the right choice. You did, Sometimes you can do everything right. And still You can not. still make the right basketball play and still lose the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. Yep. So now, what do we have? Yeah, we, we're working on a new thing here. So we, we, we're, we're brainstorming punishments <laughs> all month long. And uh, we came up with a few things, nothing we really loved, nothing that we definitively wanted to, to be the punishment for the month of December. So we wrote them all down. Yes. And put them in. Bob, you're holding the Stein of Pain is what we're mm. calling it. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so... To find out your punishment, why don't you just uh, reach in there and grab a punishment and see what you'll be doing on next week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting really? audio only this listen. Is, this I really don't want to pull it. <laughs> audio only listeners are loving it. Mm. All right. Let's get it. I got one that I like. Oh. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see. What's okay. it say? This is the mute button. Ah. Your co-hosts get to mute you whenever they want. Okay. Ooh, okay. Cool. okay. So that'll be that'll be useful throughout uh, an episode or two. Uh, oh. That uh, if we just dislike something that you're saying, <laughs> I've had enough of that. Uh, on to Justin. <laughs> muted. Bob's muted. <laughs> Every time he talks, you know what? No. <laughs> Bob, what are your thoughts on the Warriors? Well, yeah, you know, so, no, uh, actually, uh, I'm good. <laughs> cool. Uh, now, if you want to keep track of all of our game picks and chat with us, ask us questions or give us game ideas, hit the link in the description of this uh, week's episode to join our chalkboard group chat. It is a fun and free way to support the show, so please do that. 2023 is going to be a big one, and we're so ready for it. Let's get to it. Without any further ado, with everybody's favorite game. What did he say? 
not a game. That's right, it's What Did He Say? The rules for this game are very simple. I will play an audio clip of an NBA personality, player, coach, or analyst. It will be your job, Justin and Bob, to work as a team to guess who or what that person is talking about. Each correct guess is worth 100 points. In the event of an incorrect guess, Trey, welcome back. And myself will receive the 100 points for questions today. Are you ready to begin? Born ready. Who is speaking in this clip? And what who is, is this, this the person first of its talking kind? about? Can we be number one? I don't know, but I know we can't be 28th. And I think now we're I think 10 and two in our last 12 games, and within that stretch, we're probably around 10th in defensive uh, efficiency. He, he is a phenomenal player, plays the game the right way, and makes everybody around him better. And uh, what, what a joy to coach. Who is speaking in that clip? And. Who is this person talking about? So the well, first half is context. Second right. half is more of the who's he talking about side. Mm-hmm. Um, what did he say at the end? What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> uh, I'll be ready to play it whenever you're ready. Oh, oh I just want just a snippet. I didn't what, want the what a joy thing. to coach is what he says. Okay, yeah, what a joy to coach. So it's a head coach spoiler, right? right? Yeah, right, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is this maybe somebody? Oh, it's coaching. A, obviously, an amazing player in my head. Right? They're talking yeah. about greatness. Right, and there's two players that come to mind when we talk about greatness. Yeah, we talk about Jokic and Luca and Luca, right? However, okay, I don't think it sounds like Jason Kidd. Definitely not. So I think it is talking about Jokic. Mm-hmm. Ten and two makes sense, but okay, <laughs> damn, Aaron it. Gordon has had a career high year. He um, m- murdered. See what I mean? <laughs> he committed for he committed homicide. Yeah, um, we covered that last week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, they don't defend well. Oh, so something would lead oh. me to believe they can't be 28th yeah, I, I, in defense. I don't think Jokic is. Yeah. No, I don't think the Nuggets are 28th, 28th in defense. That's what I think. So he says we can't be 28th, which means they have to be doing something major poorly in the league. I think it is Jokic is our answer. Um, here. talking about Jokic. Yeah. But what, then what, what's the head coach? His name. Uh, you know he, this one. I don't. Oh my gosh. I don't. Wow. The number uh, one seed in the West. No. We don't know the, the head it's, coach's uh, name. Come on, man. Oh. Whatever. Google it. <laughs> Go ahead. Or sorry, in Justin's in Justin's case, Yahoo, search it. Whoa. <laughs> Go to Alta Vista, Justin. Let's <laughs> I'm sure we're that. wrong, but is it Michael Malone? That's right, Mike Malone. Talking about Jokic. Final answer. Final answer. I just told um, you. But so. I promise myself, I will never take Nicole and his greatness for granted. Yep. Yes, you are correct. Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets defeated the Boston Celtics 123 to 111 last night, thanks in large part to another 30 point triple double from the reigning MVP. After beating the top seeded Celtics, just what are your thoughts on the Nuggets, Bob? Um, I don't remember what I said about them going into the season, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I did say that they would be in the top of the West. Mm. Hopefully, I said that. Uh, <laughs> we'll definitely go back and look at that again. But um, Jokic is a once in a generation talent, and mm. I think we're all kind of starting getting used to that in a way. Um, I think a lot of people come MVP time are going to get voter fatigue, but I don't think they should. I, I think it's really, really interesting to watch them play well. And um, God, he looks good. Um, and just the plays he makes, no one, no one plays like Jokic ever. J Dog. So what do I think about the Nuggets have? Anyway, I think we talked about it with me, you, and Kyle in a little preview special we did. The easiest strength of schedule this season amongst any team. So with that, I projected them to win a lot of games and to be really high in the regular season. I don't know if they can win in the postseason, but I do think with Nikola Jokic, I do think you're right with their voter fatigue. They're not going to historically want to give him yeah. three MVPs in a row, yeah. which I hate. Which I hate. New hate list. Suck. New but hate list. Voters. Voters. <laughs> voters. But also, I it, whether he should or should not win the third in a row isn't as intriguing to me as like all the other cases that exist in the league. There's a, like three or four other guys to me that are really making their case very strong. So I wouldn't be as mad. Like if all the, if it ended today and all the seating kind of stood out, there's three to four guys that you can make legitimate cases for just as much as Jokic is. For sure. <clears throat> Trey. I'm a big Nuggets guy, as you we guys know. Yep. Yeah. Um huge on Jokic. He's been playing amazing. They didn't have Murray last night, came through, beat the Celtics. Uh Bruce Brown is a huge uh, mm-hmm. addition that they got. He scored twenty one last night. 
Um, big defensive player, Michael Porter Jr. Mm, uh, yes. Zoo alumni. Mm. Uh, Your guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Christian Brown's looking good too, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. He is. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, Nuggets are definitely a scary team because Contavious Caldwell Pope can also drop, pop off and drop 20 points. Um, uh, well-rounded team. Uh, I'm I'm big on the on the Nuggets. Yeah, uh, I just want to know because we haven't heard from you in a month. Do you think the so the top three seeds are now uh, the the Nuggets beat the Pelicans last night, but uh, or or recently at least um, between the Nuggets, Memphis Grizzlies, and New Orleans Pelicans, who do you have finishing the number one seed? Do you want to rock with the Nuggets? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Nuggets. Okay. Uh, they're they're well-rounded. Like I said, they have the guard play. They have the forwards. They have Jokic, who's just you know, I crazy. If it's not Luka, it's Jokic that should get the MVP right now okay. in my eyes. I got you. So, so uh, in reference to the Celtics game, they won this game without Jamal Murray, uh, he, uh, um, which is impressive. Uh, their second-best player. 30-12-12 for Jokic with zero turnovers. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. is back, as you mentioned, Trey, and playing well. Uh, he added 19-4-2. and two. Uh, The defense has been spectacular. Uh, not trying to slight you guys or anything. I don't know what you're talking about saying they can't, defend, they can't defend their exceptional on 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 defense they uh they won this game by their defensive side uh, they've got uh all up uh, all up and down the guy they've got guys all up and down the bench sorry um uh, making hustle plays you mentioned christian brown uh the play last night where he chased tatum uh and shut down a fast break layup to force a turnover that's a winning play like malone it, it, talked that about is it after vintage the game. brown like that is what he does yeah um and i think that the you know i i said this last week uh, the Celtics and the Bucks seem to have one through ten that they can slot in. Mm -hmm. I think I'm ready to put the Nuggets in that conversation, and yeah. and I think the Grizzlies and the Pelicans are right there. Uh, the Pel I would say the Grizzlies are a touch closer to one through ten um, in terms of playoff time. Um, the uh, the defense uh, look they. It speaks volumes to Mike Malone's coaching and his emphasis on defense. He is a great coach, and he has got this team playing on all cylinders. The West is still so tight, mm -hmm. but as of now, the Nuggets are the number one seed, and they deserve to be the number one seed. Yeah, and the only thing, Justin, you said about the playoff run, I, 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 in exactly what you said, Michael, I think the Nuggets are the deepest out of everyone who we, really? who we just scary. mentioned. Interesting. They're, they're, I think they're the deepest. I think the bench has a lot of, um, not necessarily playoff experience. That's why I think, the Pels fall three on that list we just listed because mm -hmm. they just have the least amount of playoff experience. Um, but I would say the Nuggets are easily the scariest in the West come playoff time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's a lot to look forward to there. Uh, we're going to dive into the MVP conversation here, I'm sure, in a second. But uh, for now, uh, that's how we feel about Jokic. What, do you have something to add? No, but I'm trying to figure out where they were 28th in, and I think it might it be. It was 28th in defensive rating. Oh, well. Oh. And they held. And a, that's what we say. We can't defend. <laughs> well, no, no, you were you were right. But they, oh, I see what you're saying. They have improved, and that's what he's talking about. I get it. They were I like, 28. I was going through this. Test, I was like, I mean, they're not great at free throw pursuit. So, <laughs> so, like, so oh, what is and they defended the, Tatum well last night. Yeah, very he, well. He yeah, hit yeah. a three last night. I think it was. He, he usually hits four a game. Did uh, he go six, three of seventeen, or something he, like that? I think. Damn. Yes. Um. The sorry. The the part of the clip that wasn't that was that was excluded. The interview mm -hmm. is him saying. Early, uh, early in December, late November, we were 28th in defensive rating, and I we can't know. be 28th. Can we be first? I don't know, but can we be 28th? No, that's what he's saying. So, gotta, all right, we got to keep it moving. We're yep. already running long. Uh, all right, number two. So, 200 points to you guys. Well done there. Uh, on to question two now. Who is my favorite player? My favorite person in the world? Skip Bayless talking about in this clip. LeBron James. It was so beautiful. <laughs> it was so overwhelmingly spectacularly impressive that I sat back and said, it's an indictment on the season. We should see this far more often. We should see this team play better around okay. him far more consistently. Who is Skip Bayless talking about in that one? What do you think, Bob? Um, well, <laughs> the clip tells me it's not LeBron because Skip <laughs> is LeBron. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go with uh, more MVP talk. I'm going to go with Luca. Luca sounds good. Uh, he always had monster, multiple monster games over the past recently, um, yeah. and so that roster should be playing better around him. So I, I wouldn't say Luca. Luca, final answer. Yep. Let's see. We should see this far more often than just on his birthday. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> no. My God, what a play! Talking about LeBron. What a play, mm. dude. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you got him. That's us. called gamesmanship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
LeBron James celebrated his 38th birthday on Friday by scoring a season-high 47 points, 10 rebounds, and 9 assists in Atlanta. A performance so impressive it made our very own Bob Aldrich text our group chat and say, at the end of the day, LeBron will be the GOAT. I get it now. I do. Although the Lakers' uh, season is most likely lost, LeBron is on the verge of breaking one of the longest-held records in American pro sports and doesn't seem to be slowing down. Thoughts on this performance, Bob? I, I mean, the comparisons to uh, another one of Skip's favorites, Tom Brady, is uh, pretty <laughs> apt because he's going to stay at the top of his level. He's going to stay at the top of the game very late into his years. Um, we've never really seen someone be this dominant in their age. It's, never absolutely impressive and yeah i i just don't see the debate when it's all said and done god i'm even quoting nick right now what is wrong with me it happens yeah. fast. god yeah j bone <laughs> um like you said i mean he's averaging 28 8 and 6 um mm -hmm. i i had this thought i'm a big lebron guy i know michael is um i trey i don't know if you're the obviously as big lebron people as me and michael are um i've transitioned yeah my thing is <laughs> good for you. I'm proud of you. We support you here. I Trey. will say this is I, I I do hesitate on the word dominance on it all because like you're not dominating games as of like winning them as you used to. It's a different version, maybe, would be the the best way to describe it. Because we've kind of discussed this as LeBron people. That window's over. You know what I mean? We're watching LeBron to the end of his career now. I don't you don't see the Lakers winning a title. I don't see the Lakers winning a title. Yeah. I don't see LeBron winning another title. Um, in his career, because he's not the guy to go jo just go play with Giannis right now. He's not the he's not going to go play with the Warriors. Generally mm. speaking, I wouldn't say he would do that. You but know, I, you know, I, I see a Udonis Haslam argument there. It's like he's <laughs> well, just going to be on the on. bench. Well, hold he's on. just going to be on the bench even if you don't use him. He no, still no, no. might win a championship. Oh, Hang he on, won't no, do no, that. I, he won't do that. I, I have issues really? with both of those both of those schools of thought. <laughs> First of all, for years, LeBron has said. I will never be the – when I suck, I'll know it's time to hang it up. Yeah. And then also, I thought the same thing is that he would never hop until this week when he had the quote that said, I don't want to finish my career playing like this, yes. playing on a team that's that's performing like this. Um, we do put a, lot, put a lot of stock into team success, as we should, rightfully so, but what's – I mean, he won that game for them. Right. He, he won the game for them. Forget, like, oh, yeah. if he had 15 yeah. points less, they wouldn't have won. Forget all that, like – Winning time, playing the winning plays, he won the game for them in his 20th season. I'm going to go on in a second, but Trey, what do you thought about this game? Well, like Justin just said, we're watching him at the end of his career. And I mean, he's averaging towards the end of his towards, career. Yeah, 28, <laughs> six, and six, and eight. Sheesh. I mean, for a career, he's averaging 27, seven, and seven. So he's playing better yeah, than like, his career this averages. Is, this is crazy to, it's to your watch. It's 20. The dude's 38 <laughs> years old. I mean, like, we were watching this dude as a kid, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. just to see him come out and produce like he does, it's greatness. Yeah. He's it, the GOAT. He, I, I do I do feel that. Of course, I had this big soliloquy before the season started that I obviously think so. Um, so he joins Jordan as the only 38-year-old to have a 45-10-5 game. Uh, he looked dominant. He, he was getting and ones. He was hitting threes, yelling to the crowd. It's a joy to watch still 20 years on. Um, he has the highest points per game average in his 20th season by over 11 points per game. What? Kobe is second, who averaged 17 in his 20th season. Uh, he's the best. He's the best ever. I don't want to hear it from you guys. I don't care what you call me. I don't care what you have to say. You will never change my mind. I have no interest in changing your mind. He's the best there ever, there ever has been. I won't say best there ever Will be, because I'm sure, you know, 25, 30 years from now, there will be somebody who just is another physical marvel, but we cannot take him for granted. He's he's the best we've seen, definitely, of this generation, and uh, definitely the best since Jordan, in my opinion. And lastly, what a, what a classic LeBron thing to say, by the way. Yeah. Like, that is his thing. It's like just a backhand to just be like, oh, yeah, you know, if we're not winning games, and if we're not, you know, uh, we don't have the right pieces yeah. around, like... That is so LeBron. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. Everyone's saying it, and 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 he he's, I don't know. I think sometimes he gets he gets. Uh, it's honestly not a slight, but it's just like that's so funny that twenty seasons well, he's he, still saying. He gets vilified like that. for saying things that people say about him all the time. Sure. He hears them. He sees them. People talk about him constantly. Obviously, it's twenty four seven news cycle in the NBA. People are talking about how poorly the Lakers are playing, uh, how, but how great he is, and oh, they're wasting his 20th season, this and that, and then he ver verbalizes it, and suddenly it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
all these rumors start swirling. Do I think he's going to ask for a trade? No. But do I think he's going to finish his career in L.A.? Nope. Yeah, I see, nope. I, I see Harden and LeBron teaming up in Ew. Houston. Oh, so, God, no. Go. I don't think he would ever play. <laughs> I don't think he would ever play with a loser no. like James Harden. All right, so uh, we are now, you guys have 200, we have 100. On to yes. question three, let's keep it moving. What is Ryan Rossillo talking about in this clip? When I saw that quote, I was like, if I trade him this year, I just get it over with. Because I think that's where this is ultimately going to go. Feels a bit like it's a message that somebody wanted to get out as a warning. That's why I would say trade. What's Ryan Masillo talking about in that? <laughs> Bob seemed Bob, to be excited so right dumb. away. Do it, Bob. <laughs> Dude, it's James him. Harden talking about the Rockets trade, this alleged Rockets trade. Like, how absurd is that? It, would it not be? What else? I... I don't I, I don't have a better answer. For it came you. out the day before Christmas. Like mm -hmm. it is just one of the most wicked things to be put out in the world. Okay. I don't know. I, it feels like that's that that's what we should talk about. I'll listen, I'll roll with you. Cause I, I don't have like you were so gung ho. <laughs> the moment it's I will I, I will but, I'm on I'm in your boat. But I'm in your boat. Poss no! Possible what did he say is, does not have the 76ers on here. You know what it is? He's talking about Trey Young. Oh yes. He's talking about Trey Young and the Hawks. That's what he's talking about. Trade his ass. Trade his ass. Trey Young. Trade. Trey. Final answer? Yeah, TT. Let's oh, see. It's not. Feels a bit like it's a message that somebody wanted to get out as a warning to the Atlanta Hawks. Yep. Boom! What a save. Bang, ba, ba, da, boom, what a you were so save. confident. You were like, it's James Harden. I was like, go for it. <laughs> Even your face, you sold it. I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> maybe. Reports have been swirling around the Atlanta Hawks as they continue to not meet expectations. The drama was kicked off by reports that Hawks all-star guard Trey Young skipped a home game in December after an argument with head coach Nate McMillan. Then we heard rumors of Trey potentially asking for a trade if the team didn't turn it around. And now Nate McMillan might resign or even retire if they don't figure it out soon. What do you make of the Hawks saga, Justin? I'll, honestly, I would trade Trey Young. And I would get everything you can for him because you have another young guard now. You've still got Clint Capella. You still got John Collins. Who, who is John Collins doesn't want to be there, or does John Collins not want to be around Trey Young? Mm. What's going on, Trey Young? You were you were. What's going on? What's in going on in Atlanta? <laughs> but we've seen in the league. If you're the star player, you get what you want. People don't trade off of you. People don't move you. So they'll keep wind up keeping Trey Young, and Nate McMillan will just leave. So that's probably what will happen. But what should happen is they should trade. Trey Young, and just, you have other pieces. Like, you're not that far off from being very serious contenders in the East. If you trade Trey Young, you've got pieces will come back for him because he is that talented of a player. He's just unhappy. Bob? He's a franchise player. Mm. He needs yep. to go to another team that is willing to accept him, not the franchise just wants another point guard. He is someone who's going to dribble the air out of the ball, Every night, and he's going to put up as many shots as he wants. Is there a team that needs that? I couldn't tell you, but <laughs> to your I point. Know. No idea. I, I don't know. Outside of, I'm going to throw this out there, the Timberwolves, even. Like, what if, hey, mm -hmm. potentially. I know I've said some pretty crass things, mm. you know, like DeAndre Ayton to the Nets and stuff. But <laughs> anyway, um, what you were saying about um, – Nate McMillan versus Trey Young. Well, we just saw what happened in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. with Kevin Star Durant. player versus head coach. Versus head coach. And I was always in the camp of, oh, no, the organization will always side with the head coach. Was not the situation there. Well, it was backwards. They, 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 he wanted, Kevin Durant wanted Nash fired yeah. in the offseason. Yeah. And Sean Marks. Oh, yeah. Josiah true. sided with Josiah and Sean, or, and, with sorry, Marks. with yeah, Stephen yeah. Adams. And and then once they started Stephen Adams, sorry, what? <laughs> Steve Nash, Sean Marks, and Steve Nash. I was yeah, like yeah, Stephen yeah. Adams. Yeah, sorry, whatever. Uh, and then once they started underperforming, then they fired him, yeah. which is kind of like a eh, best of both worlds thing. It's like so, what the Suns did. They were like, no, we're not going to give you a max offer sheet, but if somebody else does, we'll match it. Yeah. So I think we may be shifting into the league where the players are really calling the shots. Oh, they have been for years. Mm -hmm. But in the case, sure. deservedly like, so. Yeah. And I think Trey Young's one of those players. And good point about John Collins. I 100% John. Thought John Collins would be out, but you might be right. I think it is because of Trey Young, and yeah, see you, Trey. Trey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's messy in Atlanta, obviously, when your your star players missing games because they're getting into it with the coach, players, whatever it may be. That's kind of a problem. the The Hawks are five and six in their last uh, eleven games. 
Uh, they're on a three-game losing streak. Um, I I don't really know what to think about Trey Young and the Hawks. I think that they should trade him. They got DeJounte Murray. They could get a lot for Trey Young. A lot. Um, mm -hmm. Some good pieces to fit around that team. Um, if he's not happy there, I I say get him out of there. So get just quick before I go on on these Hawks here, it, Trey, you've played competitive basketball a lot in your yes. life. It, did you ever not get along with the head coach? A lot of the times. It's, I mean, you have to. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of players don't get along with a lot of you sure. know with their coach and whatnot. I mean, I, and when you do get along with the coach, the chemistry is crazy. But um, you got you got to figure it out, especially when you're the star player. Yeah, you got to kind of like you know bite the bullet sometimes. You know, do things that you don't necessarily want to do. Want to do you yeah. know? But Trey Young's kind of he seems like a diva to me. Mm. You know, it seems like it yeah. seems like he whines a lot and like he. Uh, I don't know. I, I just I don't think that he'll he'll last in Atlanta. I think with them getting Dejounte Murray, I think that he could be their star guard, take over the team, and Trey Trey Young starts off somewhere else. What, what about a Raptors? Where that will be? We talked about this the other day. I still haven't really figured out, but the Raptors I did bring up. But so the Hawks hmm. are in the nine seed. Uh, they are top eight in only two categories. Three points. Free throw Turnovers. percentage and screen assist. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, they're 16th in defensive rating, 21st in offensive rating, 23rd in net rating. Trey is averaging 27 and 10. I disagree with you all. You cannot trade him. Sure. Uh, he is locked in until 2027. He'll make $49 million that year. Uh, you also passed on Luka Doncic. You took a trade for Luka. Uh, in exchange for Trey Young and two first-round picks, who ended up being DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish, who ended up being DeAndre Hunter and Kevin Knox. <laughs> I'd take five more players in addition to those three players to have Luka on my team right now. You lost the trade, that is clear. But the market in the summer exploded uh, because of the Gobert and Mitchell trades. Four first round picks and three players for Rudy Gobert. Oh, woof! <laughs> Paul George, the Paul George trade from from the Thunder to the Clippers that that opened the gates. the The Gobert and Mitchell trades really kind of really kind of went crazy. But Trey Young is younger than those two guys. He's averaging more points and has a bigger impact offensively than either of those guys. Um, get rid of Nick McMillan. I don't have anything against him, but. Trey is someone that doesn't come around along for very often. You're making a face at True. me. How often True. do you get guys that can shoot from 35 plus at a, on a regular basis and, and do 27 and 10 mm -hmm. on, a, sure. on a nightly basis? For sure. You have a new floor general. You're yeah, fine. You can move on. But I, I just want to ask you. Neither of them are floor generals. For sure. I want to ask you what has kind of changed because you have taken a very hard line stance like against like Kevin Durant. You don't tra you, you, you stay in line and say Joe Sy is a very great owner for – for standing pat and not trading, like say getting rid of Steve Nash, and then eventually does. But with Trey Young, he obviously has a problem with the head coach. The head coach can lead you into the future, and Trey Young cannot do that. Um, unless you're Greg Popovich or you have been directly coached by Greg, Greg Popovich, players win the games. Players win series. Players For win sure. playoff series. Mm -hmm. uh, the greatest player, the greatest player in the series, typically wins the series. You can't just um, you can't just shuffle in a new a new uh, a new point guard that you think is going to average twenty seven and ten. Now you already have a point guard. They yes, but. Give it some time. And if the trade this, market's open, give this roster some time. You've made your moves. They bought. They yeah, bought. Good point. They Just bought him you, you know, for cheap. Honestly, we didn't know Luca was going to be Luca during that trade. So in hindsight, we can go. Oh my gosh, it was so I terrible. You thought Luca was going to do 60, 20, and ten. I don't know. No, of nobody did. Nobody did. But, but that's but, my point. So like, you don't. You don't know you're going to lose out on that kind of guy. That's different than any of the other trades that we've seen. And if you look at you look at the trade of Rudy Gobert, right? I understand that they gave up all those players. They gave up all those players because salaries have to match, right? It wasn't like, he's worth these players. It's the money you has to match. You didn't have to give up four first-round picks. For sure. But you also... You didn't have to give up. If you're four the Hawks, picks. you can get four first round picks for Trey. That's Young. my thing is that you're gonna you're gonna get so much, but you're so anti pick. So why are you in the camp no, of getting because, the picks? Because it's addition by subtraction. I think you addition a culture, the heat culture, right? You can try to build a culture 
in Atlanta by trading Trey Young. I think for the last decade plus, Hawks Hawks culture has been uh, flash in the pan, have a good roster, make a cute playoff run, and then uh, sell your team. Well, they've already done that. So if they sell the team, it wouldn't fall out of line with what the franchise does. But um, I, I, I just don't think you can move on from a player like that just yet, especially when you have him locked in for 27, uh, 2027. I mean, keep him. See what you see. What you can see. What you can do with a new head coach. You know who I'd love to see coach this team is Kenny Atkinson, because they need someone who can get young talent like AJ mm. Griffin and Cam Reddish and Kevin Knox developed properly, maintain egos as well, and has brilliant offensive schemes. I think that they can do better than Nate McMillan, and you definitely can't get rid of Trey Young. All right, we are way mm. past time. Question four. <laughs> let's make this a fast one, as quick as we can. Ish. Who is Nick Wright talking about in this one? He's the only guy in league history that could have done that, that could put up that stat line. It's not just that he's the only guy that has. He's the only guy that could. So go ahead. Sorry. It's Luca. I mean, yes, it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> just that he's the only guy that has done a 60, 20, 10. Yes, of course it's Luca. So when I was setting this up earlier, you know, you 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 said, oh, what a what a switcheroo or whatever by the about the LeBron thing. I, I was debating on which to put first because I was like, oh, Nick Wright talks about LeBron all the time. Anyways, okay, uh, we touched on it for a second. Luca Doncic had one of the greatest regular season performances in NBA history on Tuesday night, going for a mind-boggling 60 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists, bringing the Mavericks back from a nine-point deficit with 30 seconds remaining. He has been on an absolute tear, and now the Mavericks sit fourth in the uh, the West. Thoughts on the game? Thoughts on the Mavs as a whole? What you got, Bob? Yeah, here's the deal. Teams were 0 in 13,866 yes. mm-hmm. when trailing by nine points with 35 seconds or less over the last 20 years. That's pretty ridiculous. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, in the season, he's 34, 9, and 9 right now. Oh, it, it's just scary times if you're playing against the Dallas Mavericks. Boy, boy. Oh, yeah. Luca is a monster. I think we all get it. Um, he's one of only two players playing right now that are potentially going to be uh, future top 10 players, in my opinion. Um, all time or? All time. Who's the other one? Giannis. Um, not, no, Jokic? not Jokic? Not Jokic. Um, their Mavs are on a six-game winning streak right now. The fun thing for me is they are not top 10 in any major statistical category at all. Hmm. Um, I, I, before you finish, can I ask you, because you are, I, I believe you are a big Jokic if he... Potentially, if, the question you've asked me three weeks in a row, if Jokic averages a triple-double and they finish one seed in the West, you have to give him three straight MVPs and you don't yeah. give him a top-10 player of all time? Uh, no, because I don't think Jokic ever wins a title. Okay, sorry, good. continue. Uh, Just wanted to get that off my chest. That's fine. No, it's okay. I think you can win three straight MVPs and not win a title. Um, hmm. But, oh, loud, sorry. Uh, yeah, he's crazy. And I just will say this. I, I was the one that thought the Mavs were going to win 50-plus games this season. And people kind of were like, no, they're not. And I go, well, yeah, they are. And here we are. They're in fourth in the West. And he's firmly in the MVP conversation. It's him, Jokic, and maybe like Giannis and Kevin Durant. And that's pretty much it. Jason Tatum, I guess, is there. So five people. But it's crazy. Maybe Embiid. Yeah, Embiid's yeah. got a case. Yeah. Luca's Luca's the best player in the NBA right now. Woo! And my, I, I honestly think he... <laughs> When it comes down to it, at the end of the day, he'll be top five player ever to play. Whoa! Ever to holy play. Shit. I think with with the rate that he's been playing, I mean, like, I mean, just within the last eight days, he's had uh, or he's had three fifty point <laughs> games. I'm not throwing any shots at Dwayne Wade, big Dwayne Wade fan, but he had three in his whole career. Golly! Yeah. And which and like Dwayne Wade isn't the like biggest shooter. Yeah, he's sport. a, he's he's a, a third def- best shooting guard ever, though. Yeah, that's exactly. And that's huge numbers and like. He's 20. Uh, ESPN stats <laughs> yeah. says that if Luca plays a tw- twenty full seasons, and he continues his scoring, rebounds, and assists average, by the time he retires, he'd be the all time leader in points with thirteen with thirteen thousand assists and twelve thousand rebounds. And he's, <laughs> he's, he's already <laughs> and he's already broken LeBron's youngest two in his first five seasons. Yeah, but he's also dealt with more injuries already than LeBron has in his entire career. Sure. Good true. Point. Very true. There's no way. But, but they there's out. no way that Luca. Hey, I am not at, for a moment trying to disparage Luca, especially now after what he just did and all that. And we were talking about LeBron and all that. But 
Luca is one thing that LeBron is not, and that is a peak physical athlete. Continue. Very true. Very true. Um, but with if he if he stays consistent, mm-hmm. what we'll, do, see. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. His game isn't predicated on. Don't it, be so. surprised if he pulls the MVP out this year. Oh, yeah. I will not be surprised. So okay, about the game. I think it's the third best regular season game in NBA history. So according to Game Score, uh, which if you're not familiar is a stat that combines all of the stats uh, of a game to measure a player's productivity and impact for a single game. Uh, a game score of 10 is like an average game by an average player. A game score of 20 is like a, a good game even by a good player. Uh, a game score of 30 is pretty uncommon. There's typically less than 50 games per season that register a game score of 40. Uh, talking like the best game of from the best player uh, of the season on the super, uh, by a superstar. Uh, Steph has never had a game score of 50. Uh, Kevin Durant has never had a game score of 50. LeBron has had one. Michael Jordan did it four times. Luka's game score this uh, for this game was 56.3. Um, it is the fifth highest ever in mm-hmm. NBA history, uh, dating all the way back to when they could uh, when full stats were measured all the way back to 76. So, you know, I'm sure maybe Kareem or Wilt would have had a couple in there but sprinkled in. But that's the other thing is uh, it's the highest game score game score ever recorded in the regular season. Yep. The other four are wow. all postseason games. Um, there have only ever been two 60 point triple doubles. But when Harden did it, he finished with 10 rebounds. Um, he Luca obviously has 21. Uh, it, it, the perfectly executed missed free throw put back shot to send the game to overtime. Where he does that goofy little dance, he's he's so un, he doesn't even expect it that it's much. Wicked, um, and then does it again against the Spurs. Yeah. Yeah. His uh, IQ is crazy. He's it's out of this world. He's a genius. Uh, the Mavs um, have won six in a row in that stretch. He's averaging forty points, twelve rebounds, ten and a half assists with stu- two point two steals a game, and an average game score of thirty seven and a half. Yeah, it's unreal. I was wrong, and as a matter of fact, uh, I was very. Oh, what is? Uh oh, what is that? Did you? Is that somebody's phone ringing? Did you put it on mute? <laughs> did you put your phone on? I thought I did. You I, thought did. I thought I did, I did. too. Oh. oh, wait a second. Yeah. Uh-oh. We got to talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 79, we were talking about Maverick and, or sorry, the Mavericks and Luca's MVP chances, and I said this. I don't see them getting to a sixth seed. I don't see them getting to a home court advantage. And I said this before the season started. I don't think Luka's going to win MVP because I don't think his team's going to win enough games. Are you sure about that? No, I am not. Uh, (laughs) I was very, very wrong. Um, uh, I was wrong. If Luka keeps this up, he is the MVP. If they are a top four seed and he is doing shit like this, he is the MVP and, 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 I, I it would take it would take Jokic being in a one seed by five or so games, mm-hmm. averaging a triple double, uh, uh, for him to not win it. Okay, one more thing before we moved on from you called it. Uh, I said this last episode. Uh, the Bucks have two Pistons games, two Hornets games, and four free wins coming from the Wizards. Um, in a <laughs> nope, I was wrong about that as well. The uh, Justin, props to you. The uh, Washington, your Washington Wizards beat the Milwaukee Bucks one eighteen to ninety five. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> they didn't play honest. All right, the uh, <laughs> final final score in that one then is holy crap. Is it four hundred to one hundred? It is. What a bummer for us, nice. Trey. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, Welcome we back. have got to get zoom get in. Zoom in, Bob's. Buckets. It's time for Bob's Buckets. Hey, it's me as always. Um, <laughs> <laughs> happy 2023, everyone. All right, so now we're heading into the All-Star break, uh, but I thought we'd give ourselves an MVP race update. Do it. That's what we want. That's That's what awesome. We well, at number three, I have Jason Tatum. Here we go. It's the argument that Michael always goes to. Uh, best player on the best team. However, he might be brought down by his teammates. Can Jalen Brown keep averaging what he does? Um, you know, it's like the jaw argument. Are his teammates going to bring him out of that? Anyway, he's kicking ass. Um, but if they drop below Brooklyn or Milwaukee in the East, then I would say Giannis or KD have a better case. Nad number two. Luka Doncic. <laughs> wow. We just talked about him. Um, like I said, yeah, 34, 9, and 9. It's tough to argue against the Mavs right now. And my rule of thumb, if you're top four in your conference, you are in the MVP race. If you drop below that, then it's a little tough to justify. So if they keep it going, um, I absolutely believe Doncic will take it all. Except... We I know want, who's number one. I want the Nikola Jokic wow. three peep. I wow. want that. Um, I don't think the voter fatigue is going to happen. It, <laughs> again, once in a lifetime generational player. It also kind of dances in that, hey, man, 
we'll get a little real, all right? It, it's about the whole Eastern European thing. Having that chip on your shoulder, um, it, it's it's a very much so a uh, Jokic, fuck you kind of like <laughs> year. And I love to see how he's playing, and no one plays like him, honestly. And um, while, yes, he may have to average a triple-double and be first in the West, I think they'll get first in the West. And like you said, by five games, easy. Ooh, I don't know about easy. The Grizzlies oh, and Pelicans are yeah. nipping at their heels. Uh, yeah. Pels, One game whatever. separation. Anyway, but if the Nets come through, honorable mention, Kevin Durant, dude. Now second mm-hmm. in the East. He's averaging 37-5, and five, and he's also kind of my personal favorite to win it all. So <laughs> if I could put someone in my pocket, it's Kevin Durant. <laughs> Wow, we. Uh, I do need to make an, amend- an amendment about something I said last week. I slipped up. I've kind of flubbed my words. I said that Kevin Durant didn't stand a chance at being in the MVP conversation. I meant to say he didn't stand a chance at winning MVP. I don't think that. I don't think he'll win MVP. Uh, uh, I probably stand by your standings at the moment. Um, if I had to make a prediction, I would go. Golly, Tatum. I would go Tatum, Jokic, and then Luca. Uh, Three, two, one. Yeah, yep. because like, are there seasons that uh, that Magic or sorry that Michael Jordan should have won three MVPs in a row? Yep. Are there seasons that LeBron should have won three MVPs in a row? Yep. He didn't. Steve Nash won back to back. Didn't win a third. Uh, a lot of guys have. Uh, Steph Curry could have done it three times in a row. Didn't. Um, Giannis, Jokic's first MVP season, he averaged more points, rebounds, and assists than both MVP seasons, and because it was two back to back. Jokic won MVP uh, in his first year. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I feel like it's more so on that than his performance than anything. Yep. It would have to be truly incredible for it to happen. Trey, are you ready for your fact? I am. Trey's fun fact of the day. All righty, guys. So we talked music. about this player uh, just a minute ago. Uh, this is going to be about LeBron James. The oh, goat. So the other night on his birthday, we saw that he's played amazing, 47 points, 10 rebounds, was tiptoeing to a triple-double with nine assists. Uh, he was the became the first player in NBA history with 130-point games with three different franchises. Golly. So that's crazy. That's um, crazy. Golly. Golly. We're still watching greatness at 38 years old. Um, we'll see how long he stays consistent with that. How long do you think he plays, Trey? I think he plays till he is 43 years old. I was thinking the exact same number. What do you guys think? 45. 44. I, I, said, I, I just had to pick a number. You got a fun fact? I do have a fun fact. Uh, I heard this. I don't know if it's 100% true, but I heard it. Um, <laughs> he is, LeBron now has the most points scored on his birthday. Oh, oh yeah. Oscar Robertson. He had another 47-point game against the Hawks when he turned 25. I think I saw that, actually. No. Or, sorry, 28. Atlanta. Hey, 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah. 10 hey, years hey, ago. Hey, Atlanta, still getting the business. <laughs> all the, those years of the year he left? I don't think so. And it's the third most uh, points ever scored by our player, 38 or older, trailing Jamal Crawford and Michael Jordan, who yep. each had 51. Mm. Yep. Jamal had 51 Damn. and MJ had 51. So do you think LeBron has another 52 point game in him? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, he has 100%. Another point game. Do you think he beats the scoring title with a skyhook? Yeah. <laughs> People are rumoring that I he's. Think, I think he'll have. Uh, the fi- a fifty point game, and then when he goes out like Kobe did, he'll have like a amazing game. I think so too. Seventy. I think yeah. so too. Do you think he goes for a hundred? No. <laughs> oh, it's, it's mean, never been him. He's the only player that will. He, 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 we all say he won't take himself out of the game if it's his last game ever. Play the whole game, game, shoot every shot. I don't care. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what that's exactly what was happening with Kobe. But yeah. no, I. It's exactly what that person, the the person on the uh, sideline, was like. Hey, LeBron, where are you gonna are you gonna cry when you break the scoring record? And he was like, No, I didn't try to. I never tried to break it. I think that's more of an an F you to Kareem <laughs> than anything, it. but yeah. Well, no, I think it's true. So He's like never been down, a score him, first guy. Yes, but him downplaying the scoring record, I think, is like a oh, that doesn't mean much because Kareem's uh, criticized me a lot. But he also says in in that clip, he goes, "No, I'll cry if we win another title, but I ain't crying if I win the scoring record because I didn't try to." Sure, because that's that's what he yeah he plays that's the whole thing he plays the game the right way yeah you know, it's like, a very significant accomplishment though it is of course it's the biggest it's, significant it's the it's the most significant ac- accomplishment in the NBA I guess he's unless a good what player. if less won like five rings straight or something <laughs> yeah like, this is saying, as good right? as it gets all right uh, good good bucket good fact uh, and Thank now you. we are on to YB time warp. Yeah. Why be time warp? Here's how this one works. 
I will list four events. It will be up to you, Justin and Bob, to work as a team to determine which year three out of the four of these events took place and which event did not occur that year. One of these things is not like the other, if you get my drift. Uh, if you get the year correct and tell me the odd event out, you both receive 200 points. If you can only tell me uh, the year or the odd event out, you receive 100 points, and Trey and I receive the other 100 points. Just so everyone knows, we are operating on the calendar year, not the season year, so if something happened in the off season, it applies to the calendar year also. As I mentioned the first time we played this, pay attention to the clues here. There have been issues in the past with how some things, with some hints, are worded or presented. Mm -hmm. Everything is deliberate. Does that sound good to you guys? Always. Mm. All righty then. <laughs> you guys are a team. Uh, number one here. Uh, here are your four events. The San Antonio Spurs make the NBA Finals. The Brooklyn Nets acquire Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett from the Boston Celtics. Kyrie Irving wins All-Star Game MVP. And Damian Lillard wins Rookie of the Year. Ooh. Uh, 2013 and 2014 both come to mind. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are you thinking? Because it's made the NBA Finals. They also could have won it. Who knows? But I think Paul Pierce and KG were moved mm -hmm. in 12? 11? 10? 9? Nine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they were... I, I want to say they were moved because he always does the nonsense because, of course, he does because it makes sense for the game. It's one year removed, generally speaking. Well, then don't call it nonsense, then. <laughs> <laughs> so... He always cheats us on the way that the um, game has to go. <laughs> also, also, he says the word the, so, like, they could have been and. You know what I mean? Crazy. So, his hooked-on phonics of a game... <laughs> I like 2012. Nope. For what? The year. Really? I think 12 was Heat. Oh, Spurs? Oh, you're right. Because the Pacers didn't make it. <laughs> Danny Granger let him down. Oh. But I, the outlier to me is... Kyrie All-Star? Yeah. Has he ever won... I don't think he's. All oh, wait a minute. Or, uh, I've Martin. never asked this question. <gasps> do all these facts don't have to be true, do they? No. No. Last last time, one of them was not. One of them was not. In this case, all of them are. Uh, I don't believe him either. Uh, <laughs> he looked me in my eyes. He's lied to me before. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't you know what? So. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Bye. with. I'm. I think 2012. And I think the outlier uh. is Dame. Winning rookie of the year. Yeah. He's 33. How old is he now? 32. I'm okay with 33. When, when, when did he get drafted? He from, nice. from Weber State. Yeah, he was drafted, I believe. I want to say he was drafted in 2012. Oh, I think it was 12. So rookie of the year would have been 13. Or oh, calendar year. Damn it. Um, They make the finals in that same thing. So I'm now an all star game. Same thing. Yeah. Um, what was the other fact? Brooklyn Nets acquire Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett from the Boston they Celtics. They were going to boom. So the outlier, it would have is, happened the, the in outlier is the trade. Oh, because the trade would have happened in what? 13. 12? 13. You sure? Yeah, the year after. It Why was because it was at the beginning. It was, it was, it was uh, off season. Yep. So 13 is our year. I think 12 is our year. Okay. No, no, 13 is the year the trade was in 12. When you win Rookie of the Year. It's in the... It, yes. Yeah. yeah. Because if you get drafted it's in, it's in 12... It's in the spring. Yes. Yeah. So it's, if you get drafted in 12, whoop. But if you get drafted in 12 and they got traded in 12... No, so they, I, think, I think you're yeah. right. I, th I think it's 20, Year's 13. Oh, my God. I don't even know. I guess, yeah, 13. It, the end of the year. So if he was drafted... That's what I was trying in, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, year's yeah, 13. No, now I'm agreeing with you. Okay. So he was drafted in 12. That yeah. means he got Rookie of the Year in, in 2013. So that means the trade happened in the summer of 2012 into the next season. Into the 2013. There it is. Boom, shakalaka. So just to clarify, you're saying the year is 2013 and the trade is the outlier? Yeah. Okay. Nope. Dang it. You were very close. Uh, the year is 2013, so 100 points for you guys on that. But the okay. outlier was that Kyrie Irving uh, yeah. won the All-Star Game in uh, MVP in 2014. Mm. 
I'm proud of us anyway. Yeah, yeah. we we really you were all over the place when you, you were like when you were like it's 2012 and Damian Lillard I was like holy shit what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, two or sorry, 100 points to the four of us. Yay! Uh, on to question two now. Here are your four events. Allen Iverson wins the scoring title. The Charlotte Bobcats become the NBA's 30th franchise. Kevin Garnett is selected to his third All-NBA first team. And the Portland Trailblazers miss the playoffs for the first time in 21 years. Okay, Kevin Garnett was drafted in 95. Okay. Did he get all NBA his first three seasons? Definitely not. Okay, so that's it. So it rules out 98. Uh huh. So now we go to 99. But it wouldn't have been his third one, right? Could have been if he'd only missed one year. No, I don't. Oh, I don't. Damn. He was a rookie. He didn't get it. He did not. He didn't come okay, into the okay. league. Like you're right. You're right. He's great, but he wasn't as good as a Tim Dude, Duncan. His, he wasn't as, his he, rookie he, year was insane. Yes, but he wasn't as good as a Tim Duncan, right? Okay. Charlotte Bobcats introduction. Mm-hmm. We think about that one. I want to say it's two thousand. I want to say it's two thousand. Okay, so then that holds. Oh, that holds 98, 99, 2000. Yes. All NBA first team. It's obviously the end of the season. The end of the season, but introduced as a new team. Does that happen? That happens in the off season. Mm-hmm. So going into it. So I think the Bobcats. The, is the outlier? No, no, no. I, oh, I think Bobcats okay. and KG are not the outliers. So what are the other two again? Allen Iverson wins scoring title. AI. 2000 fits with that. I'm not worried and about o- it. 01. And the Blazers missing the playoffs for the first time in 21 years. Yeah, they. I think the Blazers missed the playoffs in 2001. I think it's. I think our year now is 01. No, I think our year was 2000. <sighs> yeah, year 2000. Outliers. Blazers. 01. Blazers, and they did it in 01. So, what's the year? 2000. And the outlier is the Blazers. Yeah. Yes. Nope. <laughs> No, no, no. Not very close on this one. The Dang. year was 2004. Oh. Uh, and Allen Iverson winning the scoring was title the was the outlier. What year? 03? Uh, uh, he won in 05, I believe. Uh, uh, either way. Uh, he didn't win in 04. Yeah, yeah. no. The Charlotte Bobcats uh, were uh, brought back to the NBA after their move. Or the Bobcats were in- created, but the Hornets had moved uh, in 90-something. Yeah. And Who Iverson cares? won it in... 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2001, 02, 04, 05. So he's won it four times. So, four. so, so yeah. oh, wow. it's like seven years. <laughs> <or other. laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, 200 points to Trey and I. Are yes. you ready for question three? I am. Let's go. Here are your four events. The Chicago Bulls sweep the Washington Bullets three to nothing. Shaquille O'Neal signs a free agency deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. Allen Iverson wins Rookie of the Year. And the NBA All-Star Game is held in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, All right, so Believe Land just hosted the All-Star Game last year, right? Mm, Which was the first time... Mm -hmm. In a long time. Yep. Let's be honest. Uh, I don't want to say 20 years because I don't. I don't want to put it at 2002 because we just mentioned AI. Thank you, Trey. Um, scoring title being what was it? Rookie of the year for the AI comment. Yes. So, I think Shaq signed. And he didn't win. Shaq beat Jordan when he came back. So they win in 91, 92, 92, 93, 93, 94. Four, and he's out four, five, five, six. No, move that back a year. No, I think you move it up a year. Mm-hmm. I think it's 98. Because the 98 Bulls, 96 Bulls, 97, 97, 96, 97, 98 Bulls. He beat, he beat Shaq the 96, 97 year. Is that how they do teams? When you say the 2017 Warriors, it's the 2017, the, 2018 yes. season. Yes. Thank yeah. you. So he beat, he came back and beat Shaq in the 90s. 697 season because the year before when he came back and we'd burn those tapes he lost them so he came back and beat them and then I think Shaq left the next year yes to go sign the Lakers with the Lakers so she would have signed in 2007 97 sorry 97 <laughs> stop 97 okay right I also if I'm not mistaken I think Allen Iverson was 97 
97. Wait, wait. Oh, what I was, think. What was the what was the Iverson fact? Sorry. AI might be. What a year was off. the Iverson rookie of the year? Rookie of the year. So. Oh, because he was drafted 96, would have won rookie the next, so it would have been 97. Yes. That holds. So does the Shack. Mm-hmm. The other two. I. I'm okay with saying Bulls the outliers. Over bullets. Yeah. And, the, uh, but that NBA 3 0 is what. When, when did they switch that from a 6 to a 7 game? Not playoff. worrying about it. Yeah. Oh, he, he, he just said know. swept. He Five. just said swept. He didn't say. I know. I said 3 0. Oh, you did say 3 0. Oh. Which is what stood out to me. Yeah, it says the Chicago Bulls sweep the Washington Bulls 3 0. Yeah. Yep. 3 0. Okay. I just heard sweep, but I'm going to apologize. Um, I, think I still that's think that's a hint. That's the outlier. I'll take it. That's the outlier. But. Tough. I'm okay with 97 and Cleveland being the outlier. If you sweep, it's a six-game series. No. If, if you sweep, no, so, you just don't lose. <laughs> it's a three-game series, also there couldn't be a six-game. No, game. not a six. Even number five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. 97 in the Bulls. Is that what I'm hearing? 90. Well, 97 in the sweep. Oh no, the, the All-Star game is the outlier. The yeah, All-Star game is the outlier. Yeah. yeah. Nope. No. Damn. Damn. Wait, 97 was the year you went with? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were right on that point. Thank you. So you get 100 points for that. But no, Shaquille O'Neal signed a free agency deal with the Lakers in 96. Uh, it was uh, July 18th, 1996. Um, Chicago Bulls swept the Washington Bullets. Uh, shout out to the non-existent Wizards at the time. Allen Iverson won the Rookie of the Year. And the All-Star Game was held in Cleveland, Ohio. And they actually uh, hosted the MLB All-Star Game uh, that summer as well, or oh. that year as well, becoming one of only three cities in the history of uh, American Majors Pro Sports to uh, host the two events of the same year. Go, gar go nice. Guardians. Yeah. Right on. Uh, what do we finish that game with there, Justo? We finished 200 to 400, you guys. Nice. nice. So what do we finish on the day then? On the day, we are looking at 500 to 600 us. Oh, wow. 100 Booyah. 100-point point, point ben benefit mm -hmm. at the heart. Yeah. Start, of the, start of the month. That'll be interesting. We're going to gamble all those points away in Props to You. All right, new month, new props to you. We obviously all started with 1,500. So as it stands right now, me and Bob in first place tied with 2,100 points. Michael and Trey have 2,000 points. That being said, I am going to take Kevin Durant over yeah. on Wednesday for 29 and a half. So before we dive into our picks, I guess we should yes. kind of explain to the folks that uh, with the coming of the new year and a new month and all that, we're... we're you know, the segment's called Props to You, but we always bet on games. That doesn't make any sense. Lame. Uh, so, but the issue is that we want to give you guys something to look forward to if you listen to this on Tuesday morning or Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. So we always bet on Wednesday games. Well, props, uh, prop bets aren't really available from any major, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, A couple days out. Yeah, yeah. Any, any betting book. Uh, uh, sports book uh, ahead of time. So uh, we're going to kind of work together to agree upon yeah. over-unders and prop bets for specific players. So with that being said, you took KD over, Katie's Katie's over, over against the Bulls at 29 and a half. The YB line of 29 yes. and a half. Line. I like that. Um, Michael, you think Giannis is going to get over 11 and a half rebounds on Wednesday? You do have 2,000 points. What are you betting on that? Uh, I would like to bet... 500 points. 500 points? Just so we're clear, I just forgot I just said it. I put 600 points on Kevin Oh, Ryan. shoot. Um, Trey, you've got Donovan Mitchell's under at 28 and a half. How many points of your 2,000? We're going 1,500. 1,500 wow. big, big ones. Right. Bob. Yes. Jordan Poole, over, under at 27 and a half. What are you thinking? Oh. Uh... <laughs> Over. I you guess. want the over? Yeah. I tell you what. Uh oh. Because I really don't like the Warriors. We know this. I'll give you two to one odds. Oh. At oh. Jordan Poole over thirty three and a half. What about thirty two and a half? Mm mm. Thirty three and a half. <laughs> thirty three. So and he half. has to drop thirty four. He has to. All right, give me a thousand on it. All right, wowza! Oh, over. Bob over. loves the punishments. Bob is a glutton for punishment. I love it. We got Trey's locked in. We got yours locked in. We got everybody oh, locked in. Right on. If you want to keep track of those bets, be sure you hit the link in the description of this episode to join our chalkboard group chat. It is a fun and free way to support the show. As always, thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, rate five stars, follow us at yay underscore basketball on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Add me on the group. Uh, just a reminder, we are 
are recording live uh, at the A Studio. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Fertilize that grass, Bob. What you got? Well, it's that time of the year again. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, obviously, we're moving snow out of the way. There's some leaves still might need to be picked up. but um, Push that snow aside. Just uh, be sh- remember... To overseed this time of the year. Oh, I guess. And you. don't even forget to get out there and touch the grass. New, new grass list. New grass oh, list. New grass list. Heard. What's up? About, what's up with the wizards? It's wizard watch time. The first wizard watch of 2023 Yay. sees the wizards huh? on a five-game winning streak. Wow. Now, you things, really count that there's high. no. There's yeah. There's no. <laughs> there's no bad way to start the year off when you start on a five-game winning streak. Oh. It's a good way to start the year off. You all know about Bradley Beal. You know about. Chris Dallas Porzingis, you, you know about Kyle Kuzma. I'm a big Rui guy. But look out for Rui Hachimura. There's a reason he's on my shirt. Over the last five games, he's averaging over 21 points per game. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Your guy, you called him. I called Rui. Trey, welcome back. What you got? Guys, tell a friend to tell a friend. (laughs) You know, I got to say it. Got to say it. And uh, look out for those 76ers. You know, I said at the beginning of the year that, you know, that they are the my title contender. The ones to win it, they've been playing really well. Um, yeah, look out for the 76ers. Uh, uh, I hear you, and I like it. Uh, I want to just uh, shout out to Bob's shirt real quick. <laughs> Worldwide Lean, if world, you're not world watching war on YouTube. Lean. Oh, World War Lean, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Worldwide Lean. If you're not uh, watching on YouTube, be sure you, you go check it out. The shirt is spectacular. As is, I think mine's okay. It's not as oh nearly my God. as good. Worldwide, no, worldwide. Hey, we got Mr. Worldwide over here. <laughs> Worldwide, worldwide. Got the Pitbull shirt on. And also, Trey, I'm really surprised you didn't tell us what day it is. Oh, it's, I'll tell you. Oh, it's it's, it's National at- Buffet Day. <laughs> and, it's, oh. and, it's national, and I told you at the beginning of the episode, it's National Day after uh, New Year's Eve Day. Oh, oh okay. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> New Year's well, Day. Uh, New pop Year's on day over day. to your local Golden New- Corral <laughs> and uh, get yourself a buffet. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We do appreciate it. We are so glad to be back and have the whole gang here with us. We love you. Tell a friend. Don't forget... Yay basketball.